like fun to you? This is what we call a bluegrass jam. And you could join in too on Play Along with Tabergrass. Come and join us. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and... Play along with Tabergrass! Hello and welcome to Play Along with Tabergrass. My name is Greg Stone and each week I'll be teaching a new bluegrass song for all of these instruments. We have the guitar, we have the mandolin, we have the banjo, and the fiddle. This episode is an introduction. Before we start with the lessons, I would like to give you a few tools to help you participate at home. I'd also like to take this opportunity to tell you about a class that I do every Saturday from September to May in Southeast Portland called Tabergrass. It is very drop-in friendly and I encourage you to come down and join us if you can. And for more information on that class, tabergrass.com, our website. And speaking of our website, why don't we start there with our introduction. So here's our website. This is what it looks like. Let me stand off to this side here and show you first, right in the middle of our home page, we have our blogs, which is our uh, class assignments and announcements about concerts and all, all kinds of events that are going on. And then over, <laughs> I'm sorry, over here, we also have uh, the little area here that says subscribe and you can put your email address in there and get announcements. You'll get emails whenever we have an important announcement or a new assignment. So I encourage you all to subscribe to the website as well. You won't be getting an email every week or anything. We don't send out that many, but we do have a lot of things going on. So that would really be fun. Now over here in this corner behind the instruments, drop right there, Tabergrass resources. And underneath the Tabergrass resources, very important, we have scores, tutorials, and audio tutorials. Scores and lyrics and audio tutorials is what it's called. Click on that, and then you'll see a page that looks like this. Now, how do I get out of the way? We do it this way. Okay, so first, we have our, our worksheets. These are our worksheets that you can download at home, right? And then down below, we have the actual songs and tunes that we'll be doing in this class, and you can download the music that you'll be using at home as you play along with us. So this is very important to use the website. It is free to use and it's for you to use and I encourage you to do that. You'll need to use it actually to download the sheet music that we play uh, uh, at the, in this class. So let's now talk about numerals. First I want to start with standard numerals. Standard numerals look like this. And these numerals can represent many different things. They can represent the frets on an instrument, like the guitar. They can, they can represent the frets on a guitar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, so on and so forth. Thank you. They can also represent the numbers of your fingers. One, two, three, four. If you have any more than four, then you're gonna be a wicked player. You're gonna be very fast, but most of us only have four fingers, right, and a thumb. So it can also designate that. It can also designate the degrees of a scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or, you know, we say back to one here in the, in the degrees of the scale because we start all over again at eight, right? That's the octave. You know, an octagon has eight sides, this is what an octave is. So these standard numerals can represent a lot of different things. So watch out for that when we're talking, when we get into the music and, 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 and those kind of things. Now, while we're on the scale, if you take the first, the third, and the fifth degree of a major scale, you put those together, and that's called, if you play them all at the same time, 
it's called a chord, right? That's what a chord is, is the first degree, the third degree, and the fifth degree of a scale. Well, we, we uh, designate chords by using Roman numerals. So we want to get away from the standard numerals and get to Roman numerals that look like this. One, two, three, four, and so on. These are Roman numerals, and we use these symbols to designate chords. The, what chord are we playing? We're playing a one chord or a two chord. Let's say we're in the key of C. This would be C. This would be a D chord. This would be an E chord. And this would be an F chord, right? We just go right on up the, the scale. So now that we're talking about chords, let's go to our chord chart. Here's our chord chart. And we start out with a column of keys. Now, thank goodness this is bluegrass because 90% of bluegrass is only in these five keys, right? C, D, G, A, and E. So we're not studying jazz or classical music right now, so we don't have to worry about all 12 keys, right? We just have to worry about five of them. That's good, isn't it? Now, another thing, because it's bluegrass, Bluegrass chord progressions, 90% of every song and tune that we do is got the chord progression of one, four, and five. In other words, if, it's, if a song is in the key of C, it starts with the C usually. Then it'll wander over to the F chord, or the four chord. And then it'll wander over to the five before the end of the song, and then maybe back to the one. It doesn't really mess with all of these others, right, too much. All of these other chords on the, on the right side there of the heavy line, we can forget about for now, right? Isn't that nice? So the only ones that we want to concentrate on right now is this square, and I call this the cheat sheet, and we'll be looking at this later on in our lessons. Now the cheat sheet gives us the most common keys that we'll be playing. It gives us the one, so that's the C, right, is the one. D is the two, E is the three, What's the four? F, right? We got F right there. And then just go one more in the alphabet and you have the five, right? So that's how we get our chords. One, four, five. Folks, I want you to memorize this at home, please. Memorize the one, four, five on your instrument. I'll have the guitar again, please. Thank you, Linda. So, one, four, five, this is the way I learned it. When I was first learning the guitar, I was studying my chords. One, four, five covers a lot of pop music and bluegrass and everything. So one, four, five, I mean like this, say so we're in C. One, the F is the four, right? The G is the five, right? So what I would do is I'd just go one, four, five, one. Now, you at home, I'm not even thinking about one, four, five. My fingers are just, I've just got this memorized. Because these are all attached in songs. One, four, five, always. Go to the D, one, four, five, one. Go to the A, one, four, five, one. I don't have to think about A, okay, now what's the four? A, B, C, D's the four. You don't have time. That, the, the ship is left, the boat has left the harbor by then. You're, you're at the end of the song by the time you get to trying to figure that out. So I really want you to memorize the one, four, five in each one of these keys. So when we do a song in a certain key, we'll, you have the one, four, five already in your hand. You know, it's already there. Thank you. So now, let's go to our chord progression. Thank you, Linda. So this is what a chord progression looks like. This puts these chords in motion, okay? This is a chord progression to a certain song. You see 16 squares here, right? We call them 16 bars, or each one of these is a measure. Every one of these squares is a measure, right? So, and every measure has four beats, or maybe it, if it's a waltz, it has three beats per measure. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a waltz, right? Or it's four, four time, more commonly it's four, four time, meaning there's four beats for every one of these measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, right? So let me put down the chord progression for a song that we all know, You Are My Sunshine, or I hope hope you know it anyway. I think a lot of us do know it. So I'm going to try and start with something familiar like You Are My Sunshine. So You Are My Sunshine goes like this. My only, nah, nah. it's in my head. Nah. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sun shine away. Now this is a very typical progression in bluegrass. You have 16 bars and this is how it goes. So now we put everything in the beat. We have the chord progression. So we start say with the C chord right here. You are my sunshine. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, back to the one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. We finally get to the five chord here. Very typical progression. Start with the one, go to the four, back to the one and then a one, five, one to finish things off. So this is very important. Now how come I'm not putting in a bunch of C's here, just to make it less complicated, how come I'm just not putting down C and F here? How come I don't do it that way? How come we have to have all of this and all of these symbols? How come I can't just put down the letter to the chord? The reason is, is because everybody sings You Are My Sunshine in a different key. So I sing it in C, right? But somebody else might sing it in D. And so then I have to, oh boy, get the eraser out and turn these into Ds, you know, and then turn the, these into Gs. No, we don't want to have to do that every time somebody sings it in a different key. We just want to have one chord chart. It makes our life a lot easier. So we just use these symbols. And that's what gets us around. And if somebody calls out the key of C, you know what the one is, it's the C, right? You know what the four is, it's the F. You know the five is the G, okay? Because you've got that memorized. So very important stuff right here as far as our backup and, wh and what we're doing. Okay, now I want to talk about, this is really for the songs. We're talking about the songs. Songs are, are, are we sing, we use sing a song. We also have tunes. Tunes are instrumentals. We're going to go over here and we're going to look at tunes now. Now tunes are treated differently. We actually have music that we have for tunes because tunes that are just instrumentals are much more busy with the melody as you can see and they don't change keys because once you play a tune all the instruments have the same voice, right? You don't have to change the keys. In fact, the fiddle players will be a little cranky with you if you do change the key on an instrumental or a tune. So tunes we treat differently. St. Anne's Reel, this is just an example for the mandolin and the fiddle, is in the key of D. We start it in the key of D. It's always in the key of D, so I can write that down. I don't need the one, four, five symbols, right? So we're in the key of D. Also, if you're not familiar with tab, this is how tab works. These lines are the strings of your instrument. This, in this example, this is a mandolin. But in, for the, your uh, guitar and for your banjo uh, as well, same, same, you have more lines because you have more strings, but it's the same example, okay? So these are the strings. This line is closest to your feet, and this line on the bottom is closest to your head as you're holding on to the instrument, right? So that's kind of a way to remember that. Now these, we're getting back to standard numerals here. They're very important that these numbers in tab represent fret numbers, not finger numbers. Okay, well you don't have a fifth finger, right? So right off, 
the bat, uh, we know that that's probably not a finger number. These are fret numbers. This is the fret that you hold down, and this is the string that you hold it down on. And then a zero is you don't hold anything down. You just play that string open, right? And then you have your measures here. We also have standard notation here for the fiddles, because the fiddles, they don't have frets. So um, uh, we need standard notation. We can't really write, write this. We, they need to read the actual music, which they do. Fiddle players do. They have, to, they have to know standard notation. We also have some symbols here for the fiddles. We have an up bow, this little V. We have a slur, meaning two notes on the up bow, right? These two eighth notes here are on the up bow. Then we have a down bow that looks a little like a staple, and that's, that's a down, up, down, up bow, and uh, continuing on and on. We have these designations here for the banjo. This, a T means thumb, an I means an index finger, and an M means a middle finger. And then if you see these little standard uh, numerals here in parentheses, that's the finger you use on your left hand to grab these, these notes here on the, uh, on the banjo. Okay, so that describes all the different things that are going on um, with the music and all the different symbols. So this is going to help you out in the future. Um, so I stress, please download the music from tabergrass.com for this class, and you'll have a week's notice as well as to what tune or what song we're going to be working on. We're going to, we're going to alternate between the songs and the tunes, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to learn four tunes and four songs to begin with, and then we'll just keep going as long as you folks want us to do, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So um, stay tuned for our next episode, which will actually be, we'll actually pick up the instruments and we will actually play music with play along with Tabergrass. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and... Play along with Tabergrass!